Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Can you hear us, Pastor? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Praise God. And praise the Most High, Pastor. All right. <laughs> Life is full of challenges, isn't it? <laughs> it always is, Pastor. But the devil and the enemy will not be victorious tonight. God is That's victorious right. all the time, Pastor. Amen? Amen. You got that right. Well, I want to welcome each and every one of you to the Christian Talk Show, episode number eight, Pastor. Episode number eight. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> this one, Pastor, is called, this episode is called New Beginnings, Pastor. Amen. New Beginnings. And New Beginnings is uh, scripturally out of the Bible. You know, on the seventh day, God rested. So that means the next day was a new beginning. Amen, Pastor? Amen. And God is always doing new things. Amen. Always doing new things, consistently doing new things in our lives, and we thank and praise the Most High. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I, you know, you know, Pastor, there's a lot of audience to, that's logging in from other countries. There's so many. I, I you know, we got to get some time to read them. Maybe on our next episode, episode nine. But I think we're almost in every continent now, Pastor. You believe that? Wow. So you see, that's only that's when you know it's only God that can do that. Only God that can do that. Amen to that, Pastor. And you know, he's he's moving and he's using this talk show to touch lives. And that's and that's what it's all about, right, Pastor? That's right. That's what it's all about. That people will be touched, that their lives will be changed, that they will draw closer to the presence of God and just live a fantastic, supernaturally powerful life. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen, Pastor. Well, why don't you give us our opening prayer? Yes. Father God in heaven, we come before you. We thank you for your greatness, Father God. We thank you for who you are, Father. We thank you for being in our lives. And Father God, I pray that uh, we would just speak your word, Father God, that it would be your Holy Spirit flowing, that you would increase as we decrease, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, have your way. Amen and amen. Amen. And Praise amen. You, Jesus. You know, Pastor, tonight we have we have two very, say, strong topics, I, I would say. We always say interesting. They're all interesting, but I would say right. very, very strong topics for today's Christians and folks that are new to, to new to the faith. <clears throat> and we're, we need to address these topics in such a way that they, people learn, right? And they learn and they take back what they're getting out of these topics and this talk show and apply it in their lives. That's right. That's right. Because it doesn't do any good to hear it all and not actually do uh, what the Bible is saying. So like the Bible says, you know, be ye not just hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. And that's the only way your life really changes. Amen. No, amen. That's right. No, absolutely. And, and, and that's the change for the better, right? That's that change that God puts his spirit in us and he be become more like him. So as amen. we, as we make that transformation, as we go through that change, one of the key things we're going to talk about tonight, pastor, one of the, the topics is the presence of God. What, what is the presence of God? What, what is that? Yeah, amen. And what, and what does it look like? I, I think the presence of God is really his closeness with us. You know, uh, some people fear him. And, and as well, we should. We should fear him, but with a healthy fear. Um, some people run from him. Some people avoid him because his light is what exposes sin in our lives, right? But God's presence provides comfort in times of need, in times of fear, in times of anxiety, in type of hopelessness. God's presence provides that comfort for us. Amen? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, in Psalms 139, 
And I'm, I'm going to just read right here, starting at verse 7. Because <clears throat> David wrote this, right? He goes, where right. can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is light to you. So he's omnipresent. You see what he's saying? He's just omnipresent. That's right. right? That's right. That's amazing because that's right. If he lives in us, then there can't be a coexistence with darkness. Amen? Because light always exposes the darkness. So we can we can see it, we can feel it. You know, if if I don't know if you've ever been in a place where you feel something's off, something's amiss, you know, it's because the light and the darkness cannot coexist and you can feel it, you can sense it, it's very palpable. It's it's not just uh, you know, some fantasy in our minds. You know, God's presence is very real and very palpable. You can you can feel him. And in times of need, boy, I'll tell you, sometimes just reading one scripture can absolutely set you free from whatever you're going through, or whatever you're feeling. A word from a, a friend, a, a co-worker, a, a boss, a pastor, anybody that, that can speak God's light into you, I'll tell you, can change your whole situation around instantly. Amen? No, absolutely. You know, being in the presence of God equips us and gives us the ability to get his blessings, right? You ever been like, it, it's just having your worship song on, having some praise music on, and you feel the security. You feel this comfort come around you, but nobody else is in the room but you and God. You ever experienced that? Oh, amen. I'll tell you, sometimes those are some of the most intimate moments uh, that I've lived through. It's, it's incredible. When you feel that presence, you almost feel like you're not even here on earth. You feel like you're actually moving towards heaven, like if you're being lifted up into the clouds. It's it's an awesome feeling. And I love it. I tell you, for me, because my heart is as a worshiper. And when I worship in, in song, when I sing praises and worship music to him or play my keyboard, I'm not a very good <laughs> keyboardist, but I'll tell you, no matter what I can play, even the simplest of notes, when I'm in the presence of God, I can feel it. I can sense it. And it just changes the entire atmosphere. Whatever it is you're going through, you get lost in him. Amen. And it's a wonderful feeling. Wonderful feeling. It, it, it really is. It, 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 you know, it, it surely is. Because when you get in the presence and, and, and you feel the spirit moving, whether it's in a sanctuary, whether it's in your prayer closet, you know, where you're driving your car, you know, you may have to even pull over at times, right? But the presence pulls you through and sets you up to for rough times. That's what do you right. think about that? What do you think? Absolutely. I'll tell you, when when you're going through rough times, there's nothing like putting your life in the hands of the one that created you, the one that knows your heart the one that knows what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, what you're dealing with, you know, and many times we tend to focus, unfortunately, on the problem rather than focusing on the one whose presence can take us out of that problem. Amen. No, I, I, absolutely. And, and, you know, once you get into the presence and you have this, say, all knowing omnipotent, right? Omnipresent spirit with you. How does it affect you, Pastor? How, do, how does that affect a person? How does it, 
What does it do to them? It changes everything. It it changes the very essence of anything that you are overwhelmed with. When God's presence is around, like I said, you can you can feel it. Whether you're praying for somebody who's sick in the hospital, or whether you're believing for a loved one who maybe unfortunately got themselves in a situation where they may be facing some prison time and and you ask God to move even in that situation. You know, I had um, my spiritual father um, who recently passed away. Um, He was in prison for seven years. He was hooked on heroin and he had a very, very tough life and robbed people and just did all kinds of things that, you know, is, is obviously not God. But when he went into prison and he became born again, Christian, he got saved. He was facing 25 years and he told God, he prayed to God. He accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and savior. And then he said, look, you know, I repent of everything I've done. I'm sorry for everything I've done. And Lord, if you want to keep me here, in prison, I'll serve you with all my heart, with all my strength. He said, but if you release me, I'll do the same. So whether I'm in here or whether I'm outside of here, I pledge my life to you, God, and I am going to serve you forever till my dying day, right? And the first time he went in before the judge, they asked for his file. The judge wanted to review it and they couldn't find the file, the state. So they, they went for another 30 days and said, you know, we'll, we'll find the file, your honor and what have you. Well, he kept praying and kept praying and kept praying. And again, 30 days later, they could not find his file. And the judge warned the state presenting the case against him. He said, if you don't find that file in the next 30 days, I am going to release this man. So he kept praying and praying and praying on that 30th day. They could not find his file. And the judge set him free. And a lot of people may think, well, but that's not justice. You know, he was selling drugs or he was using drugs or whatever, but in prison, he got clean, completely clean. No methadone, no other pills, no weaning off. He he was just set free by one prayer by a prison chaplain. And where he had letters that were written about him, that he's a menace to society and don't let him go and what have you. Later, he showed me in his office, in his pastoral office, he became a pastor, And uh, he showed me what the mayor had written, that he was one of the greatest assets to the community, that he was always out feeding the hungry and the poor, and that he was preaching inside the prison, setting people free. You know, of course, it was God's power doing it, but God was using him in in a very, very mighty way. So that's how it affects us. That's how God's presence affects us. It can not only change, but revolutionize our lives. Amen. No, that's that's powerful. You know, when I when I when I hear that, I think of uh, from the from the prison to the palace. That's right. That's right. From the prison to the palace. That's right. Yeah. Because who who are who our Lord and Savior sets free is free indeed. Is that right, Pastor? Amen. That's right. We don't have to look back. Once we're set free, listen, we're free into a whole new world that God is showing us. And if we just listen to God, when we're in his presence, if we just listen to him and obey him, do what he says, no matter how hard it may be, no matter how scary it may be, no matter how challenging it may look, God will make a way. Amen. Absolutely. He he makes a way. He makes a way every 
single time, every single time. You know, I want to I want to go ahead and read something out of Genesis. Um, I'm in Genesis three, and I'm going to read right here. Start. I'm going to start at verse eight. Then the man and his wife, you know, Adam and Eve, heard the sound of the Lord God as he, as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. In verse nine, but the Lord God called to the man, where are you, Adam? 10, he answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Amen. So right there, you know, with Adam and Eve, you know, they committed a sin. You know, Eve ate from the fruit. He gave, she gave Adam the fruit. They both ate from the, the, forbidden, the forbidden fruit from the tree. Right. So they committed a sin. So then now that you see they discovered their nakedness. Right. But what I find interesting about this passage, Pastor, is the presence of God was there and they hid. They ran. That's right. I wonder how many of us are running from the presence of God. You ever think about that? Yeah. There's there's probably a lot. You know, the, there's a saying that says, uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You know, it's not, it's not so much that we're running from God in that we are disobeying and we are running from a very present help. Somebody that can really reach out to us, somebody that can fix and change our situation. But Many times we do just like Adam and Eve. We sin and then we want to go cover it up. And then we want to do like Adam. You know, it's this woman you gave me. So blaming the woman and blaming God rather than taking accountability and responsibility and protecting his wife, right? That's not what happened. So... Many times that's what we do. We try to justify our sin. We try to blame others. We try to say it's, it's our right to be angry. And that's not the way to be thinking. We need to always be thinking upon God's ways, upon God's mercies. We, we have to remain in his presence in order to receive everything that God has for us, all blessings, right? Because Jesus said, I came to give you life and that life more abundantly. So we're supposed to be living in abundant life. So I question sometimes, you know, when you ask a Christian brother, sister, how are things going? And instead of, oh, going great, fantastic. Ah, well, I'm just hanging in there. Well, I'm doing the best I can, Pastor. It's almost speaking a defeatist attitude when if God is really present with us, we have to push through. We have to fight. And it's not easy. It's not easy because we're human and we go through human emotions and they're very real emotions. But I'm telling you, being in God's presence he can change everything in a heartbeat. Things that you would never imagine could happen, God can do. And it's funny, sometimes people worry about, you know, their bills and their light, gas, water, and what am I going to do and how am I going to pay this and what have you. But we believe that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. We believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. We believe that God created the whole earth all animals, plants, sea life, and, uh, you know, bugs, uh, creepy crawly things on the floor, created everything in six days. But we can't believe that he can pay a bill, that he can help us through something like that, you know. And I'll tell you, I, I speak to myself many times on this because, yes, life can sometimes be very overwhelming. But we got to know that God's presence can change it all for the better. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you, you know, when, we, when we're when we reminded of how powerful and mighty God is, 
and we walk away, like say today, we just spoke about it. Someone to get off the talk show and then they put God back in limits, right? Back, like you said, he can't pay a light bill. He can't pay a mortgage. He can't, you know, not even paying a mortgage. You know, God is so powerful. He's so big, Pastor. I think we, we put him in boxes and we don't even realize it because the person right. that you just spoke about wants to pay their rent for the month or pay their rent for the next two months, whatever it is, right? Right. But God is so big. He wants to give you the whole house. He don't want you to pay a mortgage. He wants you to pay. And then he wants to take uh, us, make us a blessing when you buy somebody else a house. Is that is that a big God or what, Pastor? Hey, man, he, he, he actually wants us to be the lender and not the borrower. Come on, Pastor. That's right. He wants us to have. We're supposed to be living a kingdom lifestyle. I've never known of a prince or princess that's been broke. And many times we think that that's the way we have to live. And all we got to do is really just continue to wait on God, continue to focus on his kingdom. Because he says, listen, focus on his kingdom, basically, right? He says, put God first. And all these things shall be added unto you, which means if you don't have them, they're going to be added unto you. But you have to place God's kingdom first. You can't be worried about life's problems all the time. It says, the Bible says to pray without ceasing. So put it all at God's feet because he is a big God and he can overcome everything. Right? And we can overcome everything with him and through him. Amen? Amen. You know, that that's so profound because that leads us right into our second topic, the strength of God. Amen. You know, you said lean on him. It's, it's his power. It's his strength. So the subtopic tonight is how do we just rely on God? Relying on the almighty. You have anything to say about that, Pastor? Any ideas on that? Absolutely. I think... Number one, if, if you look at Ephesians 6.10, the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, right? And in Proverbs 10.29, it says, the way of the Lord is strength for the upright, but destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. So I think one of the keys to being strong in the Lord is living right before his sight, because sin obviously separates us from God, right? Until there's repentance, right? And I think we also, the, the biggest key, I think, for having that strength is to have faith and trust. Faith and trust in him. And those things are not always easy to do. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick story. This is a personal story, something that happened to me. I remember years and years ago, the first time I was asked to do a solo at a, at a very big church. And we had uh, 50 people behind me. There was a curtain. We had 50 people uh, that were in the choir. They had worked on this song for two years, the musicians, and wanted me to lead it. I was absolutely terrified, terrified. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't speak in front of people. I certainly didn't want to sing in front of people, but I was in the choir and they said, we want you to do a solo. And I was, I was scared to death. I was literally almost in tears. I was so scared. And people were praying for me. There, there was a bass player there that uh, he used to play with Stevie Wonder in, in some of his concerts. And he actually told me, he says, you know, stop it. He says, I, I've played in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And I never get nervous. You're making me nervous <laughs> you know, because I was coming so unglued with this. Right. And the music director came up to me and, you know, people were praying for me and what have you. And he, the music director told me, he says, you know, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. 
And I said, how do you know this? I'm so scared. I can't even breathe. And he says, because your faith and your trust, you have to now absolutely rely on God because you're beyond yourself, right? So the only thing you have is faith and trust that you're going to have to put in God. And that's exactly where you should be humble about it, concerned, but reaching out to God, not feeling like, oh, I'm going to take that mic and I'm going to rock the house. He says, if you said that, then I would be scared to death. Like, oh my gosh, what kind of a train wreck are we going to have right now? When, when your ability and your faith is in yourself, that's an issue. He said, but if you put your faith and trust in God, it is going to be absolutely fine. And it was just a fantastic experience. Uh, I was very blessed. The people were very blessed. The pastor was very blessed. It, it, it was really, really a, a fantastic day. So my faith and my trust had to be in Christ. And that's how I got the strength to actually not give up the mic and say, I can't do this. I can't do this at the last minute and just leave, walking off stage. You know, I counted on God and, and God brought me through it. See, God wants us to have a childlike faith, right? He wants us to, uh, to be counting on him in a way that a child, when you, when you tell a child, a, a four-year-old that says, you know, they're watching TV and some commercial comes on close to Christmas and it's it's uh, some kind of a toy commercial. And, you know, uh, mom, dad, can you buy me that? Can you buy me that? And what do we always say? Of course. Yes. Yes. We'll buy you that. You may not ever actually go do it. You may not think about it again. Uh, your child may not think about it again because they're looking at all kinds of toy commercials. But that trust that they have when you say, Yes. When they say, can you buy me that? Can you buy me? Yes. And they just automatically believe you and stop asking. They just believe you. And that's the kind of faith God wants us to have. When we go sit down in a chair, we don't look to see, are the bolts on right? And, and look under the chair and, well, I want to make sure nothing's broken on the back. We don't do that. We just go sit down with absolute faith that it's going to hold us up, right? That's what God wants from us, you know, and, and when we're going through certain things, when we're going through pains, when we're going through fear, when we're going through rough time, listen, if we rely on God, on his word, we get closer to him. See, we shouldn't withdraw at that time. Because that's what the enemy wants. He wants us to be alone. He wants us to be away from our brothers and sisters. That's why the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of the saints, right? We want to make sure that we are not staying away from our brothers and sisters in Christ, right? I've had to push through that pain many times. And in those times, I try to avoid, you know, negative people, people that are going to bring me down, that are going to you know, exacerbate the situation rather than uplift me and, and try to pray for me and try to speak some sense into me, you know, when we're feeling weak. So we want to surround ourselves with godly people. Amen. No, absolutely. You got to surround yourselves um, by other, say, I call them soldiers in the army of the Lord, right? Other, yes. Others that's been through something, Pastor, because when they go through a situation, their their experiences help you look at God in a different light. It helps you see focus on something that you may have missed that was God working the whole time, and you thought it was in the background, but do do listen to somebody else's experience and say, you know what? He was actually in the front. God was actually leading this the whole time, and He had a solution for this particular problem. From the beginning. So let me let me reference something really, really quick here, Pastor. Yes, sir. Because in the Bible, God is called the El Shaddai, hey. God Almighty, 
God Almighty. L Amen. means God. And and why they would do that, Pastor, um, <clears throat> in those times, because if you remember, um, you know, the uh, Egyptians, uh, they had a lot of different gods in those in those days in the Bible. Right. Um, right. You know, <clears throat> God for sun, God for air, God for water. So they said yeah. L. L comes in as God, hey, the the King of King, the Lord of Lords. Right. <laughs> this is God. Right. Your God's report to our God. And then the Shaddai. He's almighty. So when you're looking at those, the strength of the El Shaddai, Pastor, it takes discipline to follow what he wants you to do, doesn't it? Absolutely. It takes effort. It takes discipline. But you get results. I'll tell you, one of, one of the main things that has helped me get through some of these darkest times is really not focusing on me, but focusing number one on him and then doing something for others, right? Doing something for others, going out of your way to help somebody else. And many times I have found in doing that, I myself get inspired. I myself uh, encourage myself. So it'd be like David in the Bible, right? You have to encourage yourself sometimes. Because no one else can do it. You have to question, uh, you know, why is my spirit feeling like this? And reach out to God. And as I was saying, you know, uh, having faith and trust in him. You know, I, I have a story. Um, I've preached it at uh, my church before, you know. And uh, one of the things is it's the story of a gentleman. And he's out. Uh, sitting down early in the morning. Uh, up there as the sun starts to rise and he starts anchoring this really long uh, wire, a real thick wire. And he starts pounding it into the ground, you know, with the big hammer. Pank, pank. Pink, and he, he plows it into the ground. And the guy's kind of looking at him because he's disturbing the other gentleman's peace, right? So he climbs down and goes all the way to the other side of the canyon, climbs up, and he tethers the wire to the other side. Well, he comes back and he's stretching, and uh, the gentleman looks at him and he says, uh, what are you doing? You know, the first guy that was there. And he says, oh, well, you know, I'm going to walk across this, this tight wire all the way across the canyon. And the first guy says, well, you're, you're going to die is what's going to happen. He says, no, no, I, I can do this. I, you know, I've, I've done it before. I think I can do it again. And he says, well, good luck, buddy. So the guy walks across the Grand Canyon on this wire and he walks all the way back. And the guy's applauding, you know, he, like, oh, fantastic, great, great. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe you did that. And the gentleman says, you think I can do it again? And he says, well, I don't know. The wind's picking up. Yeah, I don't know. You might. You might. I mean, you're pretty good. I saw you, but I don't know. So the gentleman grabs a balance beam and he walks across and he walks all the way back again, this time kind of running a little bit. And the guy again starts clapping and says, you, you, that's phenomenal. Wow. And he says, you think I can do it with this wheelbarrow? And he says, I, I, I do. I, I, I think you can. So he goes with the wheelbarrow across and he comes back. The guy says, I'm totally convinced you're, you're the best. You're the best on the planet. I've never seen anybody do that. And he says, so do you think I can do it again? And he says, yes. He says, you absolutely believe that. He says, yes, I do, without a doubt. He says, then jump in the wheelbarrow. Yeah, See, yeah right? That's, that's, the, that's, that's the trust, right? <laughs> exactly. That's the kind of trust. That's the kind of faith that God wants us to have. And if we have that, we can truly, with his strength, we can overcome Anything, anything. And I believe that because I've lived a lot of those things. Amen. So, 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 Pastor, I, you know, 
those leaning on God or putting yourself in the proverbial wheelbarrows as you were speaking speaking about and full trust because the the Bible and the scriptures always says that we we walk by faith not by sight so I wanted to go over to second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 but he said unto me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness therefore I would boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. In those weak moments, Pastor, in those moments where we feel as if we're alone, in those moments where we just feel like I haven't heard from God in such a long time. How do you stay strong in those moments? You have to discipline yourself. You have to trust God's word. God says that he's for us and not against us. He wants the best for us. He loves us with an undying love. He sent his son to the cross for us. He wants to give us every blessing. He wants to heal us from any sickness and disease. He wants to strengthen us and comfort us through pain and sorrow. He wants to be there for us. So we need to be disciplined to push through those moments. And the only way is to encounter God in a very real and special way. Be alone with him. Take time with him. Worship him. Praise him. You know, one of the strongest things you can do and that the enemy absolutely hates is that when you're going through something really, really tough, really hard, and you worship and praise God anyway. In the face of all that adversity, though you don't feel like singing, though you don't feel like praying, listen, sometimes even just a quick prayer, like we talk about Peter, Jesus saved me, that's enough, right? The thing is to push yourself. Listen, anything that we do, whether it's exercise and adding weight to a bar or running, uh, you know, that extra two blocks or three blocks or, you know, uh, dieting or, or, or fasting, you know, anything that we do that's worthwhile is difficult. All work is difficult. It's meant to be difficult, right? But God said, hey, this is what's going to happen because of your disobedience. So it's, it's, not, it's not fun. It's not something we look forward to. But it's what God expects. He doesn't expect us to be quitters. Because we have to know who lives in us. Who is actually in us that is greater than he that is in the world. It is Jesus Christ. It is by his spirit. The Lord says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, thus saith the Lord. So it's his spirit we have to count on, his Holy Spirit. We have to empty ourselves of us and fill ourselves with him. Amen? No, that, that's just, that's exactly right. You know, oftentimes um, <clears throat> when I'm um, you know doing moderation or I'm I'm, I'm at the podium, the poor pit in, in church, yes. I'll reference um, when Jesus turned the water to wine at the wedding. You know, a lot of folks think it's natural wine, and, and, and it wasn't right. But right. it's that it's that emptying of yourself, right? Right. Because when they were using those 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 vessels those those um basins to, to to clean up to wash up before the ceremony those same those same basins Jesus said fill them up with water and he t and he told he, he told he told the help now dip some out and give it to the bridegroom now the 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 help knew hey you know those those sheep herders that just came in they just washed their hands Hey, th those guys that have been outside working for seven days straight, they just washed their hands and feet in this water. So this infested water, this COVID-19 water, you want me to fill it up and just dip some out and give it to this guy? 
<laughs> so they knew, yeah. right? <laughs> if right. you can imagine, put yourself in the situation, they knew what was in the water. Yes. But when he tasted it, he said, this is the best wine. So it was a symbolic representation on why Jesus was here for us. He's here right. to take the worst, the most infested things inside of us, the dirtiest, unfilthy filthy things. And when he pours himself into us, just like you said, when we empty ourselves, Jesus pours himself into us, fills us up, and makes us the best. He Amen, cleanses Pastor? us from all unrighteousness. Amen. He cleanses Amen, us sir. from all unrighteousness. And I'll tell you, what a, what a wonderful gift, a free gift. Imagine it. You can't pay for it. You can't work for it. You can't negotiate it. It's a free gift just given by God. What a, what a wonderful father, huh? Amen. He is. Father. He really is. And Amen. he loves us so much that he, that he gave his, his only begotten son for us. That's right. And we weren't right. even we weren't even born yet, but he knew that he gave up his son to set us free. That's right. It's so amazing, Pastor. And as I look at the at how we rely on God, how we push through God, and we take the discipline, we it takes discipline in ourselves as Christians, Pastor. But what happens when the strength of God like you get like a little, you feel like you get a little bump, like you hit like hit like a little bump, and and you know as Christians, you know if we're not like you said, like you said earlier, Pastor, if we're not connected with other stronger Christians, you know you could the ripple effect could be a, a, a monumental like a mountain almost instead of a molehill, right? So what do we yes. do when you when you when you feel the strength, then all of a sudden it leaves the next day? What do you do? You continue pressing forward. You continue to press forward because life is not over. You know, I, I have found myself in that situation many, many times. And, you know, when 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 I feel like that and I'm praying and, I, and I'm asking God and I'm, I'm, I'm confused and I'm tired and I express myself very real with God. And I, I'll tell him I'm, I'm struggling through this God and you need to help me and you have to show up and God, please. And what are you doing? And, and, uh, you know, uh, what do I do? And many times he'll, he'll, he'll comfort me himself. Many times he'll take me to his word. Um, and then sometimes I'll have to reach out, you know, uh, I'll have to reach out to someone that I know that God has given them a key to my heart, so to speak, to help me with it. Like, you know, some of the situations that I've been through in my life and, you know, I'll call you sometimes and it's like, hey, brother, mm -hmm. listen, man, I, I need mm -hmm. to tell you what's going on and I need some help here. I need some prayer. See, we can't be so prideful and think, oh, because I'm a pastor or because I'm an apostle or because I'm, you know, a prophet, I, I don't need prayer or I don't need to call on other people, you know. No, that's why God placed other brothers and sisters in your life. Yes, it's him. We understand that it's all him. But he also gives strength and power to other people. And we have to, we have to always be humble. We can't think we're better than anybody else or that we have all the answers. You know, sometimes we have to reach out to other people and say, listen, I'm really going through it. I'm really struggling through this. Can you help me pray? Or can you pray with me right now? Or listen, I need, I need to hear something, man. I need to hear something encouraging because I, I feel like I'm going to lose my mind. And then that brother, that sister will start to speak God's word, God's uh, life into you. It's like them giving you a drink of water when you're, when you're so thirsty. Or it's like them giving you something to eat when you feel, you know, that, 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 that hunger that just 
pained you, you know, all the way to the deepest pit of your stomach, you know. I've, I've been there, <laughs> you know, both, both spiritually and physically. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, when, when you allow, number one, God, and number two, uh, people that are placed in your path by God, it's it's a it's a double whammy, you know. It's uh, God giving you His strength, and then having somebody else uh, more, shall we say, tangible, you know, earthly that, that that you can hear and and you know talk with and and have them share back and forth, and you know and of their experiences, of their pains, or how they got through something, or or you know uh, what it is that that, that they do. And I'll tell you, you if you put your faith and trust, as I was saying, in God, first and foremost, you know, and then surround yourself with those who can pour God into you and and that can speak uh, positive, uh, godly things into your life. You know, you, you want to make sure that you're getting good, wise, godly counsel in all situations, right? See, for example, you don't want to talk to somebody. Let's say you're having trouble in your marriage. You don't want to talk to somebody that's from the world, even though it's a friend of yours. Because if 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 I was having trouble in my marriage and I go to one of my earthly friends that doesn't know about the Lord, what's he going to tell me? Ah, dumper. Listen, there's plenty of women uh, in the world. You don't need to put up with that. That's the advice you're going to get from the world. Right, right. But if you go to a Christian brother or your female, you go to a Christian sister and you tell them what's going on and you go for wise counsel, they're going to tell you, listen, this is what the Lord says. This is what, you know, what you need to focus on, what you need to concentrate on. Or, you know, listen, you need to take a deep look at yourself at some of the things that you're doing or saying. You know, they can they can give you good advice. You need to stay put. No, divorce is the easy way out. You got to weather this storm. You got to reach out to God. You got to pray. You got to fast. You know, you got to get wise counsel. Then the story changes. That's when the story changes. And that's how you push through. You humble yourself. Amen. No, I abs absolutely, Pastor. You know, when I look at it from, you know, you were you referencing wise counsel and who you surround yourself with. It reminded me of when, you know, Jesus had 12 disciples, but he had an inner circle of three. He had That's Peter, right. James and John. So when the when the when the girl, they thought she was dead. I think she was like 12 years old. Jairus's daughter. You know, there was a lot of non-believers in it. Hey, why are you, why are you bothering the Lord? Why are you bother, bothering the rabbi? Leave him alone. She's, she's already yeah. passed away. And he said, no, she's sleeping. And then it says he kicked him out. Yeah, so he, emptied, <laughs> he emptied the room quick. Yeah, I don't need a bunch of non-believers and negative naysayers in here. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. That's why I say you got to be careful who you surround yourself with, you know, in those times. Absolutely. Absolutely correct. And 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 he had you know like just like you said he had those those believers those hardcore rooted believers in right. God, and that's the key, Pastor. When you right. find yourself out there and you just the strength you feel like oh, I'm strong today, then next week or next month or the, the, the next hour sometime, right, Pastor? Something the next hour, yes. it's like oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, what just happened, oh, yeah. right? Yep. You got to pick yep. up and call your inner circle. We think best. That's right. That's right. I'll tell you. And to get to get uh, when you're going through something really tough to get uh, prayer warriors on the line. You know, if if you know somebody that's sick with cancer or or somebody who's dying of maybe COVID, and you say no, this is not going to be, and we're going to speak life. You know, and and you call up a group of people that you know are hardcore prayer warriors. And they start interceding, right? Because, you know, uh, we know that uh, Moses interceded for the people 
We know right. that Noah right. interceded for the people. And God's like, listen, I'll, I'll change my mind. You know, if you find, you know, 50 believers, I'll, I, I will not destroy the city, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? If you find, a, uh, you know, 40, if you find 30, if you find 20, right? All the way to 10 people. Oh, please, Lord, if I find 10, will you spare the city? For those 10, I will spare the city. See, so intercessors are powerful. And they can intervene. And the greatest person that intervenes is Jesus. So when we're calling on Jesus and saying, Lord, please, I mean, your will be done, of course. But listen, we're asking you to speak life into this person, to not let the enemy take them, especially if they're not saved, right? I mean, you, you just start praying with the, with the fervor, with the fire, and God can change that situation. And I've been there many times, and God is faithful. Even when we're not, God is still merciful and graceful and will show up when you need him. Amen. Amen, Pastor. And believe it or not, that is the hour. Wow. Praise God. <laughs> you know, so God good. is just, yeah, he's so merciful and he's so good to us, Pastor. And and I I just give him all the glory. We always give him all the praise. And Pastor, you got any closing statements for, for our listeners tonight? Uh, my closing statement, I think, is if you are going through something, a very tough experience, I think getting into the presence of God, as we have discussed, and having faith and trust in God in order to receive his strength, do that. Don't put it off another day. Don't put it off another minute. If you're feeling that, right when you feel it, go to God. Call out to him and watch him change your situation. Amen. 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 God is so powerful. He is a deliverer. Amen. And every time we call on him, he answers. That's right. I'm going to go ahead and close this out in prayer. Please, sir. Heavenly Father, King of Kings, eternal rock of ages, we thank you. Yes. Creator of the universe, most high God, yes, healer, way maker, thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to have this talk show this connection, this gathering to talk about you, allowing your children to converse about your goodness and your mercies and how you give us strength in our time of need. In our weakest moment, you make us the strongest because we have to lean on you. And you're so loving and so merciful to us. All the glory, all the adoration, we give to you. Continue to bless your children. Continue to bless everyone that listens to this podcast. Change their life. Draw them closer to you and give them strength. These and all things we ask for in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I tell you what, Pastor, it was another good show. Another good amen. show. Amen. Praise God. Episode 9 is going to be just as powerful. I'm just reminding everyone on Saturdays, on Saturday night between 7.30 p.m. and 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Make sure you turn it, tune into Podbean, download, put in the app, and make sure you listen to us. Amen, Pastor? Amen, amen. Pass it on. Pass it on. Stay blessed, stay healthy, and remember, you, you have... have the power. The power. Amen. Amen. <laughs>